insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 123, Back to School Off the Cuff. I am your host, Joseph Whalen, and my beautiful and intelligent co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? I'm doing all right. How about you? I'm doing okay. So this week, we're going to kind of switch things up a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. So we've been doing... I don't know, kind of topical stuff, some some hard-hitting topics from week to week here. We did miss last week. We did not do a podcast last week. Why did we not do a podcast last week? I had my first marching band performance at the football game. Right. Um, our entire schedule was disrupted last week because of the storms that blew through. Yep. The remnants of Hurricane Ida. And we actually had a tornado blow through our town. Fortunately for us, it was on the other side of town. Um, unfortunately for the folks on the other side of town, it was on their side. But that wound up <clears throat> causing some schedule disruptions. Uh, so we'll talk about those. Uh, we'll talk about the storm a little bit. Um, we're going to talk about... Um, just general things, you know, you, this was your first week back to school, first week in high school, right? So we're going to talk about, uh, some of the stuff with school, some of the issues you ran into, and then we're going to talk about some concerns, some, certainly some concerns that I have, maybe some concerns that you have, and just kind of talk through some of the stuff because it's been kind of the last two weeks have been kind of a emotional roller coaster, I guess you could say. Yeah. So things have been crazy hectic, emotions have been running high, expectations are running high. So I think it's time, you know, it's a good opportunity for us to kind of tone it down a little bit. You know, usually our podcasts are directed at, at our audience to try and help them out. But I think we kind of need a little decompression uh, podcast for ourselves this week. So this this week's podcast is for ourselves and maybe our listeners can benefit from it as well. Before we get into all of that, though, I would want to invite our listening and our viewing audience to subscribe to the podcast. You can subscribe to audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens. Video versions of the podcast are listed as Insights into Things. We are listed on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Pretty much any place you can get a podcast these days. I would also invite you to reach out to us, give us your feedback, give us some suggestions for topics for shows. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can get us on Twitter at insights underscore things, on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast, or Instagram, we're at instagram.com slash insights into things. We can get links to all of those and more on our website at insightsintothings.com. Shall we get started? We shall. All right, let's do it. So first up, well, let's talk about the storm for, for a little bit, because I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm personally, I'm still a little freaked out about the storm itself. So we had remnants of Hurricane Ida blow through. Yep. Tons and tons of rain. We had flooding all over the place. But what probably had the most direct effect on us were a string of tornadoes that came through, one of which came right through our town. And we happened to be huddled down in the basement at the time, like we're supposed to be. And um, 
we have security cameras outside of our house. We have security cameras inside of our house too, but that's a different story. <laughs> um, we had cameras outside our house, and when the tornado was actually blowing through town, I could actually see the cloud mass of the tornado. I couldn't see the funnel cloud, but I could see the cloud mass of the tornado in the distance while you guys were downstairs with me. Wow. Um, which was very scary for me. What are your impressions of having to sit down there and listen? Because we had the news on, the weather was going, we were getting all the alerts on our phones and everything. Give me your impressions of, of what you thought. Well, first of all, I'm not one for storms. I normally can't even handle lightning storms because I genuinely just get freaked out by lightning and thunder. I don't like those kinds of storms. And we had a lot of it uh, during this storm. And whenever we go into the basement, I know it's a pretty strong storm. Um, uh, having to listen to the news where we were kind of all huddled, in a way I kind of wanted to somewhat block it out even though I knew it was going on. I kind of just wanted to keep myself calm for the most part and just say that everything was kind of going to be okay. Hopefully, okay. You know. And were you successful? I feel I was. I definitely don't think I definitely think it helped to keep me calm um throughout the storm. Um I felt a bit better. Um keeping after that, um, and at least, although I knew what was going on, I at least tried to center my focus around something different, kind of like how I normally do when things kind of scare me. So, well, and we've been dealing with the aftermath of that storm. Uh, for instance, someone that I work with uh, in another nearby town, their town was hit very hard. I mean, entire houses destroyed. Um, and they had some damage to their house as well. Fortunately, they weren't hurt. Most of the people in their neighborhood that were affected by it weren't even in their homes at the time because they were away, which was fortunate. Mm -hmm. um, but to see the kind of power, like I'm not big on storms either. You know, there's, I'm, I'm the type of person, <clears throat> I wouldn't say I'm a control freak, but I like, I like having control over aspects of my life. And things that are completely random and outside of my control tend to scare me. Lightning, for instance. Like, I can take all the precautions in the world, but if a lightning bolt's going to hit me, there's nothing that I can do about it. And that, that randomness scares me. Tornadoes are the same thing, especially as powerful, because these were, we usually don't get storms that are this powerful. Yeah. And in, in looking at some of the, news coverage of it after the fact that I, I had seen some really alarming statistics. One analysis had actually talked about the town that was near us called Mullica Hill that had gotten hit with the really powerful tornado. They said that debris from the houses in that town were thrown as far as 20,000 feet into the air and landed in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, which is a about a 40 minute drive from us. Wow. That's how powerful the storm was that blew through. So it's really scary thinking that something like that came so close to us. Yeah. Um, but fortunately, like I said, you know, we came out of that. So with, without any, any issues or anything, but it did affect stuff in town. So your first performance for marching band was supposed to be Thursday. Tell us what happened with that. It ended up getting pushed back due to the weather to Friday, um, guessing they still had to work things out because the storm hit us on when. well, technically, yeah, it was Wednesday, um, and I was technically supposed to have another practice then, but um, we ended up ducking out because we knew the storm was coming, and I guess enough people ducked out to the point where they completely canceled it. Um, and then on Thursday... Um, Around 1-ish, maybe, uh, Mommy got the notification saying that uh, uh, the uh, our first performance was moved to Friday because of the storm. Right. So Wednesday, I had been watching the news, the, the weather forecast most of the afternoon, and I had texted Mommy and said, look, I don't want to send you to marching band practice because 
the worst of the storm was going to hit literally when you were showing up for a marching band. And I didn't want to chance it. I'd rather have you home with us. So that's why you didn't go. And then we got a notification after mommy notified your, your director that we weren't sending you. Shortly after that, he sent out a notification saying it was canceled. So I have to assume a lot of other parents had, had pulled their kids out too. Yeah. So they moved the football game. And this was the, the I guess, opening game, the first game of the, of the season for the high school, to Friday. And uh, you had to be there for the early to get set up and, and prep for the game and everything. Uh, Mommy and Daddy went to the game, which I was you know joking around saying that's the first high school football game that I've been to since I was playing high school football. Yeah. Uh, and it was interesting. Tell us what your impression was of the performance. Tell us what you did and how you liked it. So um, basically uh, we were going to be playing in the halftime show and we were only going to be perform- performing the first movement. There first were, of three, right? Yeah, first of three. Uh, and... Um, while we were in the stands for the first, second, and fourth quarter, we actually played stand tunes, which were basically just like tunes we kind of had that we were just going to be playing whenever someone scored or whenever the team like went out and stuff. Like rally songs, wipe out, and you yeah. know, crowd things to get the crowd into the game. Yeah. Okay. So, did you like that? Yeah, um, I didn't originally know all of the songs, um, but it was a uh, nice way to keep me still kind of invested. Um, and I did eventually learn start learning a lot of them, and it was actually kind of fun. Now, the other thing you guys did was you played the national anthem at the beginning of the game, too, which was really well done, I have to say. I was really impressed with it. Yeah. How did that make you feel, getting to play the national anthem? It was the first time I've ever actually played it. I've heard it multiple times, um, and that was kind of the first time I really played it, which was kind of nice. Now, was the whole band there, or did you have some missing members? I'm not sure, but there were a decent amount of people, so we still did stand tunes and uh, the halftime performance. So let's talk about the halftime performance. You guys weren't in full uniform. How were you guys dressed and... How did the whole performance go? They would given us uh, marching band polos and told us to wear black pants and black shoes if we had them. Um, so that was kind of the uniform we had. We also had our shirts tucked in to make us look slightly more um, in form, which I got to say, I actually kind of like the polo. Yeah, you looked really good in it. So everyone looked really good. It's a nice looking uh, shirt. Yeah. Um, so preparing for, uh, the halftime show, we actually went back behind the stands and did, uh, some warm-up, uh, songs, and then we kind of got in line with partners for an arc because we had spaced it out before. Uh, we were tuned, um, then by the time they said they told us to come out, we went into the arc in a unified form, um, played one of the lip slurs, and then went into um, getting ready for the halftime performance. Now, Mommy and I both had an opportunity to watch from the stands uh, the halftime performance, and it looks like you guys get about 12 minutes to perform at halftime and didn't take, obviously, since you were only performing one of the, one of the three movements, you didn't take up the whole time. And the, it was what was amazing, really, was watching the pit crew get all that equipment out there and get set up in such a short time. It, it literally looked like a pit crew at a NASCAR race. Yeah. Uh, so total props to the the, the pit crew for the, the dedication they had there. Yeah, and I remember how long it would take for them to set up normally whenever we when we had actually uh, performed it uh, together with Pitt, um, on Tuesday. So how do you, how did you like the performance? Do you think you guys did well? Do you think you need improvement? Do you think you're ready for showtime at this point? I mean, it was only the first movement and I definitely say, I think we could have done better, but overall for our first performance, I don't think it was all that bad. Was there anything in particular that you found challenging or difficult? Like, did you have, this is the first time you've performed in front of an audience, right? Mm-hmm. How was that? I mean, that's usually the biggest challenge in that first performance. 
Yeah, um, I tried at my best not to really think about it too much and kind of just go through the sets in my head, which definitely did help. Um, I definitely had to try, like, staying in form for the entire time. Um, it'll be interesting to see how we put the entire show together because, you know, you kind of need the endurance to do it the entire time. Yeah. Yeah. The closest thing I think I've ever had was performing in concert choir in high school. And the advantage that I had was that was always indoors in the auditorium. So when you're up on stage, they've got all the stage lights on you. So you can't even see the audience. You're so blinded by the light. Mm -hmm. So you know they're out there, but you don't see them. So you don't get as nervous, I think. But you guys don't have that advantage. I mean, you guys are out there in the middle of a field. You've got an audience behind you. You've got an audience in front of you. Did the did the band director give you any suggestions or ways to handle the nervousness or anything like that? Did he anticipate that? I think he just told us. He never really like specifically said. It's just he's just like make sure you perform the sets right, and that's kind of it. So just just sort of stick to the plan, and you should be fine. And to be honest, like the 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 amount of like stuff we need to think about whenever we're moving, like getting into the right sets, using the right step sizes, making sure you're playing the music. It was enough to make us kind of stop thinking of, it was enough to at least make me kind of stop thinking about the audience that was there and kind of, it was just a regular performance. That's good. I mean, so it's almost automatic for you at that point because your brain's trying to do so many things at once. Yeah. Did you have fun? Yeah, I did. Um, I was really, my legs were kind of shaking um, in the beginning, and it honestly went by quicker than I expected. So did anything unexpected happen, or did it kind of go sort of like you expected it to? It went all right. Um, no one tripped or got hit, which uh, they actually said was a big feat um, for the first uh, performance, especially considering the fact this was like the, this is like the earliest they've ever performed. Right, right. Um, so... Now, was this the first time the entire band was together doing everything at once? Because I know Color Guard was out there with you too, right? Yeah, Color Guard had actually been with us a couple of times, and Pitt was only with us for, uh, Tuesday, I believe. Um, so, it w so we had done it, like, once, we had done it, like, a couple of times all together, but it was nice doing it in front of the audience. Nice, nice. So it sounds like it was, overall, it was a pretty good experience then. Yeah. Sweet. Well, let's take a little break, and we're going to come back, and then we're going to talk about back to school. All right? We'll be right back. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Civ Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. We're going off the cuff today, talking a little bit about the last couple of weeks and kind of taking it easy this week. So let's talk a little bit about back to school. This was your first week back to school. You started on Tuesday. Um, how did it start out? Give us, give us an idea of how it started out. So it kind of started out a bit more chaotic than I wanted. So first of all, um, we were going to be emailed our bus passes um, so that, you know, we knew what time to get on the bus and what bus we were taking. But Mommy never got the email. Right. And we believe it's because she didn't fill out one of the forms on Genesis that she didn't even get a notification that she had. Which was a last, right, it was a last minute form and she never got notified that she had to fill it out. Yeah, so it was kind of... 
We were kind of worried on Monday, but the good thing was we actually had a neighbor who was also in high school, so we went to them. We got the time, and we figured, hey, everything was going to be okay. So um, I woke up, we got prepared, we went out, and uh, we and um, basically whenever I would go to the bus, at least when I was in middle school, uh, she w- mommy would drive me up and I would just stand at the bus stop. So me and the other kid, Donovan, um, were kind of just sitting, we're kind of just standing out there waiting for our bus to come by. Um, and a few minutes go by to the point where we kind of realize it's getting a bit late. It's getting close to seven around the time that I was supposed, that I'm supposed to be in school. Um, and Donovan ends up actually going to my mom saying that apparently, um, he had a friend who was also on the same bus, um, and he texted, like, what's going on, and he's, and his friend said that he was already at school. Oh, boy. So, we missed the bus, kind of. Okay. So, mommy- But there was a bus at some point. Yeah. Okay. So, basically- uh, the good thing was mommy was off that day, so she was able to just drop me off. Um, and apparently the, uh, we weren't the only, uh, we weren't the only ones who experienced that. In fact, traffic was jammed with people dropping their kids off. So, but your bus ride home was okay, right? You didn't have any problems with that? Well, I was able to get home, but I did kind of have some issues. <laughs> So during phys ed, which was my last period, I decided that I needed to go and find out which bus I was going to take home. And I wasn't the only kid. There were three other kids who also were having issues. So um, uh, all three of us went over to the guidance office and um, were hoping to get our bus pass. But apparently we had to come earlier to get our bus passes and, like, they couldn't give it to us at the end of the day, and when after the bell rang, they said, "Go up to the bus drivers and ask if they if they stop on your stop." So you had to go survey the bus drivers to see if they stop at your bus stop. Yeah, um, but the good thing. <coughs> <coughs> what a disorganized mess. Uh, but the good thing was, um, I, mommy had heard from Donovan uh, that D ten was the bus he was supposed to take. So when I'd found D10, I asked if they had stopped on my bus. I didn't ask any of the other ones. They said yes, and I was able to get on and get home. Wow. So that was day one. Well, at least with the buses. So that was day one with the buses. Has Have the buses been okay since then? Yeah. Um, I learned that – I learned yesterday that – so Donovan uh, was supposed to get picked up around 6.35 – um, it's out on this bus pass. Apparently, they pick us up at 625. That's a significant difference. Yeah. That's 10 minutes different. Like, yeah. did you expect them to get le- there, like, 10 minutes earlier than the actual time? Apparently, they do. Yeah. Okay. So, steady bus schedule now, at least, right? Yeah. Um, I'm able to take the bus... I was able to get take the bus to school for yesterday and today, and I've been able to take it home each day. Okay, so hopefully that problem is solved. So what was your overall impression so far this week? So you've got three days under your belt now. How's it been? How's it been? Um, I think I'm a, um, it's been all right. I'm not – I – it's kind of complicated. Of course it is. It's high school. I mean, yeah. Um, we'll get to the issues in the next segment, but what's your initial impression? Is it manageable? Is it overwhelming? Is it scary? Is it straightforward? What's your first impression? Uh, it sounds like it is manageable for right now, but that it's probably going to get a bit harder later on. And that's, Probably what's going to happen, which is typical. Yeah. Or do you have any immediate concerns about any of your classes um, just from first impressions? Uh, I know your Spanish class has some interesting hall pass rules. Tell us about those. Um, 
so that's kind of one of the only classes that has mentioned it so far. Apparently, you're only allowed to go to the bathroom once a week in their class. <laughs> what kind of prison rules is that? <laughs> yeah, and we were, like, given uh, passes, and we only have six passes for the marking period. Can you, like, sell them on eBay and make money or something off of them? I mean, at the end of the marking period, if we have at least one that's not checked off, we get five extra credit points. So wow. I guess we kind of make something from it. That's that's a little draconian there. A little I, bit. I can't believe they're, they're going that route. I mean, yeah, I definitely... For Spanish class. Like, it's not even a class that's like like physics or like your advanced math. It's Spanish class. It's like, I think your Spanish teacher's taking her, her job a little too seriously there. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so what about concert band? What happened with concert band? Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, concert band ain't gonna happen this year. So this one I kind of got a little riled up about on. Yeah. So you were told from your guidance counselor last year that if you wanted to be in concert band, you would have to sacrifice your lunch because it would be, would be done at your lunch. So when you got your schedule a couple of weeks ago, you didn't have concert band, but you did have lunch. So mommy reached out, found out that, well, you couldn't have concert band because it was the last period of the day and that's your gym period. Uh, that No, that was physics. Physics, physics. And there wasn't anything they could do about it. And I thought that was kind of unfair. Yeah. You know, the fact that, that you were told one thing and then something else happened. So I wrote a, let's call it passionate letter, to your guidance counselor and to the administrative staff of the school to which I've still not gotten an acknowledgement, a reply. They've not told me off. They've not gotten, I've not gotten anything, which tells me that as open and interested in communication as they pretended to be during orientation, they don't want to hear about problems. They only want to get pats on the back, apparently. So I'm guessing that's how school's going to go. And we're just going to have to deal with it at this point in time. And I'll have to find some other way. Maybe I have to reach out to the board of education instead of the principal and the vice principal, since I'm not getting anything from them. I'm so, you know, I just, I, it was worth mentioning that this was something that you were supposed to get. You didn't get. Um, and the th the one thing, the, I, the reason you didn't get it became glaringly obvious when we went to orientation and how there's almost zero focus on the arts from the school and everybody seems to be focused on scholastic or focused on athletics which really is a terrible disservice to the students of that school because the likelihood of kids making anything out of themselves from a scholastic standpoint is statistically insignificant from a professional standpoint compared to scholastic or compared to um, a career in the arts. You are infinitely more likely to achieve a measure of professional success in the arts than you are as a professional athlete. And the only reason the school is focused on athletics is because the school, it's a moneymaker for the school. And they're basically selling the kids education and future down the line so they can make a few bucks off of them. And it was very evident in the uh, orientation when the athletic program got like eight slides and you had maybe one or two slides that they just sort of blew through for the arts side of things, and it was kind of an afterthought. Yeah, and kind of thinking about it, I remember that they said um, they actually had a completely new, like, weights um, area mm -hmm. that was made for the school, and yet in marching band, we have to make donations for the student account. Yeah, and that's the, that's the terrible thing. You look at the school, and you have a new turf field. You have a new weight room. You have... Two gyms do you have? And what do you have for a band room? 
Like it's smaller than the one I had in middle school. Which is which is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And this isn't the first time that I'm going to complain about this. And I suspect that I'm going to be sending numerous letters and going to student, uh, going to boards, uh, um, parent teacher meetings and school board meetings to talk about this because what this school system is doing to their students is a crime. It really is. But anyway, I won't get on the, on my soapbox about that here. Although I already did, but let's come back off the soapbox. Let's talk about having friends in your classes. So you made a lot of friends in band, which was very helpful this summer. Um, Kind of gave you a little bit of a head start going into school. How are you doing with uh, friends per class at this point in time? Well, I have someone who has seven classes of the same ones as me at the same time. That's pretty impressive. I mean, yeah, that's never really happened before. Like, I have period one, period three, and by the time we have lunch in fifth period, we have all the same classes. Right. We basically are going to the same place after lunch. Nice. (laughs) You got a whole buddy now. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And I guess being in the engineering program kind of does give me the advantage of kind of having the same people in my classes because I have – because I – because in three of my classes, I have like three. I like have the same class coming with me, in at least three of my classes. So. So how do you think that's going to um, help you out throughout the year? I know you've had an issue. Let's see if I can talk. I know in the past you've had issues with being the only person in class that you knew. Like you didn't know anybody else, and you found that difficult fitting in getting put in teams with people you didn't know and stuff like that. How does it help when you're in classes with people that you know, or at least when you're in a class with new people, but those new people are in multiple classes with you? Do you find that comforting at all? Do you find it helpful? Yeah, that sounds pretty comforting, um, especially considering the fact that um, I definitely feel like I'm in – place with them um and i know that we kind of go through similar experiences um we have similar classes so um i definitely it's definitely pretty comforting to know that um i kind of have buddies that i might be able to stick with that's nice and you know in the event that at some point in time you get sick or they get sick you just need to exchange contact information you can bring homework assignments back and forth for them you can, you can have uh, study time with them. It, it makes it so much easier when you've got a group of people that, you know, that you have common ground with there and you can ease into subjects. Or you may run into a situation where you get a lesson one day and you just don't get it. One of the other kids that you're friends with does and then you can get together with them and it alleviates a lot of that anxiety that you were having before. Like you were having issues with one or two of your uh, subjects I know math last year where you, you had had a, a lesson that was given and you, you didn't get it on the first take. And a lot of that had to do with the barriers that you were running into being remote. Yeah. And you didn't have anyone to turn to. Like mommy or daddy wouldn't have been much help to you. Having that school, that, that supply, uh, that support system in place there is, is, is something that's going to help along those lines. And the other question I have was how – Different is it for you being, or is it different for you being in school now with students rather than the remote learning you did for the last year and a half? It is pretty different because even when we had co- like calls, um, video calls, it didn't really feel like I was really part of a class all that much. All we did was really comment for the most part. No one really ever wanted to show their faces other than the teachers, and no one really, like, turned off their mic on, well, besides in gym. So do you think what you have now is a better environment to be learning in? Maybe, maybe not. I'm not entirely sure right now. It might be better. Jury's still out on that one, then. I mean... (laughs) I didn't, I wasn't one of the people who really had much of a problem for the most part with remote learning. Um, And now having to go into physical learning, I don't think it won't 
it will be that much of a problem, but, you know, it's still early. Sure. Okay. The last question I had was, how is your schedule? Uh, I know the one big concern kids have every year is, where are my classes, and am I going from one side of the campus to the other every time I have to change classes? How's your class scheduling now? Is it spaced to the point where you're not able to get from class to class in the amount of time, a lot of time between classes, or do you think it's pretty well balanced out? I honestly think it's pretty well balanced out. I go from one hallway to another hallway that's actually very close to each other and it's not that far of a distance. Then I go upstairs and I have two classes that are in the same hallway and really it doesn't take all that much time to get there. And the only, like, commitments I need to really have are when I go to gym or when I go to the cafeteria, mainly because of how crowded it can get. Okay. Well, that doesn't sound so bad. But even then, it's not that... It's not actually that bad. It's just, you know, it takes a little longer to get there. Right. Well, I know the last year that you were in your other middle school, you were kind of run ragged around that school because you were up, you were down, you were across, you were back, and and you had a couple of classes where you really had to to book it to get across to the the next class. Yeah, specifically um, after I would have lunch, um... And after I had gym were probably the times where it's like, oh, gosh, this is really. So no hundred yard dashes like that in this school? Yeah. Um, and it's nice that I have phys ed at the very end. Yeah. Um, because when I was in seventh grade, I had it at seventh period. And then I had ELA for the last two periods. And um, having and my ELA class was, oh. Uh, the way upstairs and all the way at the end of the hallway and i came out this door right so that was the longest commitment and i was always and for the most part i was like almost i was like very close to having the bell like ring but the nice thing is in uh high school you actually have four minutes to get to your classes as opposed to two right so it's easier to get to my class in the amount of time good that's good So let's take another break, and we'll come back, and we're going to talk about some concerns and issues moving forward. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. We are talking back to school, a little off the cuff discussion here. And a little catch up of the last two weeks. We're going to talk about some of the concerns and issues we have moving forward. And probably the biggest one that I think I have, and one that I was hoping that you'd you'd kind of give me the 411 on, the the information on. Do you feel safe with the precautions at school now for COVID? That's one that we had talked about that you're going to kind of have to assess. And what's your initial assessment? Well... The good thing is everyone is, they make sure that everyone's wearing their masks properly, which is nice. You're only ever allowed to take your mask off if you're actively eating, actively playing an instrument, or actively in gym. Okay. Which we... That's something. Yeah, um... Uh, we're having assigned seating so that, um, everyone knows... Um, that they're in the same seat and, you know, for COVID precautions so that um, everyone just stays in the same seat every day. 
Uh, what about overcrowding? How's the crowding in there? Are you bumping in the people in class? Are you spread out in class? Are you, are you tight in the hallways? How's the, the overall crowding in there? In the hallways, it's a bit tight, but in the classroom, it's not really as tight. Um, and the classrooms are spaced out. Okay. What about you said you had an assembly already? How was the assembly? Kind of crammed. Not okay. going to lie. Like... We were crammed into one area in the auditorium, the center, and all the seats were filled. And how did, how did that make you feel? Did you have a sense of anxiety from that? Kind of, because I knew this really wasn't COVID approved. I don't know why they didn't space us out all that much. Did you say anything to anybody? Um, I wasn't able to. Um, I, I just like, I mean, I said it out loud, but I don't really think anyone heard me because everyone else was talking. So, all right, this, this is something I definitely wanted to talk about. I don't want you to be put in a situation where you feel unsafe at school. So if you're in a situation like that and they're asking you to sit or stand or do something and you don't feel safe, then you need to tell a teacher or you need to tell a staff member or something like that how you feel. I don't want you to be shy about it because I'll guarantee you that there's probably a lot of other kids that feel the same way and they're afraid to say anything. And if you speak up and set the example and let them know that what they're doing is making the kids feel unsafe, you can set the right example from day one right there. You're not going to get in trouble for it. Trust me. If if they even try to get you in trouble for that, they're going to get a lot more than a nasty letter from me. All right. I will back you up 110% on that. You need to feel safe. You know what is safe. You're well aware of what the CDC guidelines are. You don't know how many of those kids have been vaccinated. Just because you're wearing a mask doesn't mean you're safe being shoulder to shoulder with people. Mm-hmm. So I don't want you to feel any hesitation whatsoever of going up saying, hey, Mr. So-and-so, I don't feel comfortable in this situation. I am too close to other people during a pandemic. Can I space out? Can I move someplace else? Can I sit someplace a little bit further away? Can I sit someplace safer? I don't feel safe. And make sure you say those exact words, I don't feel safe. Because if they don't do anything at that point, then they're legally liable. So you need to let them know you feel that your safety is threatened by what they're trying to do. Okay? Mm -hmm. So don't ever hesitate to do that. Okay. And then we'll see how they react to that. And if they react properly, kudos to them. If they don't, well, if they don't, I, I have an overwhelming sense of pity for them if they don't. Because I will rain fire down on them if they don't. Because you and every other one of those children need to be safe. Mm -hmm. We've already gotten notifications from the school system about COVID infections. And if they're doing stuff like that and they're acting stupid like that, then they need to be called on the carpet and they need to make sure that they're, they're keeping these kids safe. Because I will not send you to school if they are refusing to keep you safe. All right? Yeah. Neither mommy or I, we will both back you up on that. 110%. So make sure you speak up. You set that example and you let them deal with it at that point in time. And I'll guarantee you there will be other kids, tons of other kids that are going to feel the same way and, and they're going to be glad that you've got the courage to do that. All right. So let's just keep that in mind in the back of our mind. Besides that, do they have cleaning supplies available? Do they have barriers up? Talk to me about some of the, the protocols that they have. They do have cleaning supplies that you can use, um, but they don't have any barriers up. Okay. So are you cleaning? Yeah. Okay. What about hand sanitizing? Uh, they do have hand sanitizer, but I did bring my own, so I kind of use that. Good girl. How are the bathrooms? Are the bathrooms being cleaned? Um. I don't know. I haven't really gone in the bathroom. What about water fountains? Are they open in use? Uh, I believe so. But you're not using them, right? No. Okay. Do you have a water bottle that you can fill up and keep with you? 
Yeah, I could. Okay. I do. That's the best thing to do then. Yeah. Count on and, yourself. And the nice thing is they do allow water bottles, um, which is nice. I've seen other kids have water bottles. So. Right. Well, because I know they were giving them out at the orientation as a as the prize. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's okay. Is there anything else that's happening that makes you feel unsafe or that you're questioning from a, a COVID protocol standpoint? That would probably be the buses home. Okay. It's extremely crowded in there to the point where the three seaters actually have to fit three people and the two seaters actually have to fit two people and like mo- like mommy said with little kids you can kind of fit three people in there but with high schoolers you really can't. Right. And um the good thing was me and Kenny um are able to just sit in the three seater um and not really have to have three people which is nice cuz we kind of space each other ourselves from each other mm-hmm. um so at least I feel safe from that but like there are a lot of people on that bus and it's extremely crammed so are there hand sanitizers or wipes or anything on the bus I can't tell you can't tell okay are they ventilating the bus are there windows down how is the bus ventilation um I think you can put the windows down. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I've never really paid too much attention to it. Okay. All right. These are things that mommy and I are going to have to address. We'll we'll certainly make our concerns known. Any other COVID related concerns? Um, I think that's mostly it. Okay. So how about the schedule? How are you holding up? Are you tired? Are you you have enough energy? Are you getting enough sleep? What's going on with your, your sleep patterns? Um, I've started getting used to it at this point. Um, it's not insanely bad. I've gotten I've been getting good sleep. Um, and I've been having enough energy during the day. So um I think so far with my sleep schedule, it's been all right. Um, so how about even the nights that you've got band practice? How is that on you? Uh, I definitely think that's going to be a bit of a challenge to work through because when I came home on Wednesday, I wasn't really feeling all that well. Right. Um, so that might be something we have to look for. Look for. Okay. Um. We'll have to keep an eye on that and see what we what we can do to adjust that. Was it just that you were tired and exhausted? Was it heat? Did you not get enough to drink, you think? Um, I felt like I had a decent amount to drink. It wasn't too hot out. I might not have had enough energy at the time. And I guess just the fact that we had to pretty much do the same stuff over and over again kind of got tiring to the point where... I kind of just didn't really have the energy. I started completely losing it faster. More mental exhaustion that led to physical exhaustion. Yeah. Yeah, the repetitives. I could see that. All right. Well, we'll definitely keep an eye on that. Uh, How about your classes? Do you like your teachers? Mostly. Mostly. That's a vote of confidence. The only one I'm not really all that fond of right now well, is... Don't mention too much in here because you never know who watches the podcast or listens to the podcast. True. There is one teacher I'm not necessarily fond of. They take their job a bit too seriously, I think. Mm, okay. To the point where they have our first assignment on Friday where none of my other teachers really have that right now. Okay. And, well, like, it was an easy assignment. It's just... Do you really have to be that hard on us this early? Maybe they're just trying to set that pace up for you that you're going to going to drive you. And there's nothing wrong with being challenged. If they do it with unrealistic expectations, then we have a problem. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it's unrealistic to expect kids to turn in an assignment after the first week of school. It kind of gives the teacher, you know, kind of lets the teacher set the bar too as, as to what to expect from these kids. All right, so not too bad there. What about the curriculum? Have you run into anything with the curriculum yet that's concerning to you? Uh, I just know I'm going to be expecting a lot of work, and with marching band that might be difficult. I guess I'll just, you know, have to deal with it. Yeah, well, and marching band's not all year. So, you know, if you can look at it this way, 
if you can deal with the workload while you're in marching band for the first couple of months, then you'll be able to breeze through it the rest of the year. Yeah. So this is going to be the, probably the most difficult part of the year for you. So we got to keep an eye on it and make sure that you're okay and you're staying up on everything. Mm-hmm. It's a test, and we'll, we'll see how you pass the test. Okay. Um, Chromebooks. So you guys are switching to Chromebooks this year. Um, no textbooks? Some textbooks? Well, you they still have the textbooks in case you need them, but they're not giving them out. So you literally just go from class to class with a Chromebook and, what, a notebook or two? Yeah, and, like, some stuff for, like, binders and stuff. How are you adjusting to that? Um, it's nice not having to carry around giant books all day. Right. Um, still kind of have a heavy bag, but it's not as heavy as it would have been if I did have those, like, five-pound books. Okay. Are you comfortable using the Chromebooks? I, I feel so. Um, it's definitely not my actual laptop, which I'm actually using at home because you don't want to have this connect to the internet my Chromebook connect to the internet here well we can get you connected here if you have stuff on or you need to work with so don't worry about that okay we'll get you connected um no no issues technology wise though using it you're comfortable with it the interface is okay yeah it's fine it's just it just feels like a smaller screen than you'd kind of expect because like with my engineering and CAD classes, we actually have legitimate computers, right? Um, which are much, with a much larger screen. That while the keyboard's kind of clunky, it's actually a lot easier to see. With the Chromebook, it's kind of small. Okay. Well, and we we might be able to work around that here if we have to. I can't do much for you in class, but <laughs> it's all right. We might be able to work around with the with it here for homework and stuff like that. Yeah, but overall, using it at school, I feel, is fine. Yeah. Well, that's good. I didn't think it would be too big of a leap since you were kind of homeschooling on a computer the last two and a half, last year and a half anyway. So using a Chromebook is a bit of a learning curve because of the operating system. But good. I'm glad it wasn't a, wasn't a big concern. Um, what other concerns or issues do you have that we haven't talked about? Um... Any personality conflicts you've had? Any no bullying at this point, I assume? No, no bullying has been happening. I've never really interacted all that much with some of the people, so. How about marching band? Do you have a lot of marching band kids in your classes? Um, not some, but not a lot. Okay. Are there any other concerns about school that you have at this point in time? Doesn't sound like there's anything pressing. Yeah, which is kind of surprising. I'm still kind of waiting to see how things go. Well, it's it's very early. You know, I think the my main purpose of, of the podcast today was kind of just feel things out and get your initial impressions and address any concerns that you might have. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll certainly check in. We don't have to do it as a podcast, but we'll check in throughout the uh year as we move on and as problems creep up we'll figure them out and we'll deal with them that's what we do Mm -hmm. you know there isn't anything that that we can't address and take care of we we take care of it all so i that's all i had i mean i just threw together some some quick notes and some questions that i had uh we'll take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll get your closing thoughts on on how school start the school start of school is Or anything else you want to talk about. It's your your show. You can talk about whatever you want. We'll be right back. Go with your closing remarks. All right. So I know this podcast really doesn't have all that much of a message to it. It was kind of just a, hey, let's check in and see how the last two weeks have been. Um... But yeah, I've started school and I'm probably going to have to deal with a lot of stuff that hopefully we can try relating to everyone at home. Um, I at least hope that this is at, was at least somewhat helpful. If not, at least you enjoyed watching. Um, 
I at least hope this was an okay podcast after not being here for a week. Okay. I would say that was sage words, but really that was just you summing things <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think a lot of kids out there that might be watching the podcast have gone through similar things as you. Uh, start of school is always kind of a, a nervous time, a, a high, a heightened emotion time, lots of new things, especially going into high school for the first time. You know, this will be the first and only time you ever have to do this. Yeah. Uh, high school's all downhill from here. That's, Yay. that's the best way to look at it. Yeah. Um, so that was all we had before we do go. Uh, I would invite our audience to subscribe to the podcast. Once again, you can get audio versions of this podcast listed as insights into teens. Video versions are listed as insights into things. You can find us on Apple podcast, Spotify, Google stitcher, iHeartRadio, radio tune in and anywhere you can get a podcast. I would also invite you to reach out, give us your feedback, give us your show suggestions, you can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We're on Twitter at Insights Into Things. You can find high-res versions of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insightsintothings. We do stream five days a week on Twitch. If you are an Amazon Prime subscriber, you get a free monthly Twitch Prime subscription. We'd appreciate it if you subscribe to our show at twitch.tv slash insightsintothings. You can also find audio versions of this podcast on the web at podcast.insightsintoteens.com or on Facebook at facebook.com slash insightsintothingspodcast and Instagram at instagram.com slash insightsintothings or links to all those show, uh, bios of all of our hosts and much more on our website at insightsintothings.com and you... And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights in the Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights in the Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother, Sam. That's it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.